I'm here with Dr. David Agus, who's a professor of medicine and engineering at University of Southern California. And, and what, are, what are we looking at right over here? So you can see on the right top there is a captain of the British Royal Navy named James Lind. And he was a remarkable guy. Actually did one of the first clinical trials that I'll tell you about in a minute. But in the Battle of Trafalgar between the British and the French, he did something very clever in that on his ships, he had fresh fruit, he had limes. Hence the term limeys for the British soldiers. What was amazing is, is that being out at sea for several weeks at a time, the soldiers would all start to develop scurvy, which is a lack of vitamin C. What happens to someone when they have scurvy? So the con vitamin C is involved in collagen synthesis, which is kind of the scaffolding of the body. Right. And so your body starts to degrade. You start to get bleeding gums, your tissues start to fall apart, and it, it, it ends up in death in most people if no vitamin C is given. I see all your connective tissue in your body starts to degrade. It literally starts can't to degrade. Rebuild itself. Wow. So in the late 90s, I was working in the laboratory, and I read his book. It's called A Treatise on Scurvy from 1746. Wow. And in it, he said that, uh, 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 talked all about doing autopsies in people with scurvy. People my age, and I'm right. in my 40s, have never seen scurvy, ever. Right. Right. So it's the first time I ever heard about scurvy and what it looked like was reading it. And what he mentioned was that the brain was always intact in people with scurvy. So when I looked to identify how vitamin C worked in the body, what the transporter was, the first place I looked was the brain. And science had kind of overlooked looking there for this transporter because nobody had read the book in a long time. And we cloned, which is identified the gene to allow vitamin C to go in and out of cells. And it's a pretty cool molecule because the vitamin C that you eat is called right. ascorbic acid. Right. And in order to get into cells, it has to be converted to another molecule called dehydroascorbic acid. Okay. But what's amazing is, is that in t the medical textbooks, as late as the 1920s and 30s, they still called scurvy an infectious disease. Because at the end of his book, he put a paragraph where he said, I happened to sell the extract of lime to prevent scurvy, and it right. didn't work. I see. And it didn't work, because as soon as you squeeze that lime at room temperature, right, right. the vitamin C degrades. And so people tried to reproduce what he did, and they couldn't. And you know, he was an entrepreneur. He couldn't sell limes, because everybody had limes. So he tried to sell the extract of limes, and it didn't work. So even though he was able to, and, and the clinical trial that he ran was regarding limes and yeah, scurvy. Yes, so he took these nuns and he gave them he a, a, a diet that had no fruits in it and then a diet with limes. And he showed that the people who had the limes didn't develop scurvy and the others died. So he scurvy. just watched some nuns have get scurvy and die. Not yeah. the most ethical experiment. No, no, no yes. Die, okay, but so he's not necessarily the most. He most, did that in the 1740s the, the, the most, the and most that ethical was. ethical person in the world. But, but, but he, he, he learned that, oh, the limes will at least, it seemed, prevent scurvy. Or right, because remember, what a vitamin is, and this yeah. is key, yeah. what a vitamin is is something the body can't synthesize enough of. So, for example, a mouse right. has an enzyme that allows it to synthesize vitamin C. So in a mouse, it wouldn't be called vitamin C. It would just be called ascorbic acid because it's not really a vitamin. Interesting, interesting. So if we were mouse doctors, we would just, we would, we'd just call it, we would call it ascorbic acid. That's exactly. I mean, if we were mice, we'd call it ascorbic acid too. Exactly. exactly. Um, or they probably have their own language. Which, right, 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 yeah. But, uh, uh, but in all of us, we have certain things that we have to get from the outside, from food, right. and those are called vitamins and minerals. Right. So a vitamin doesn't mean that more is better. Right. It doesn't mean that is good for you. It just means that you require a small amount of it and your body can't synthesize it. So, so this guy right here, he does the clinical trials with the nuns. He figures out that Lyme, people who have fruit and who have Lyme, they're not getting, they're not getting scurvy. And so he sends out a bunch of Lyme with the British, the, the, the Navy, mm -hmm. uh, during the Napoleonic Wars. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why they're called Limeys. And, that's, and, 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 and I guess apparently they, they won the war because of that. Because once you're at yeah. war, you're several weeks to see, at sea, the French Navy is getting decimated because with scurvy. Right. Because they're not getting, they're eating dried, they're mm -hmm. eating beef jerky or whatever else they mm -hmm. might be eating. They're not getting fruit. And it was really, so because of that discovery, because of that discovery, the, the British won the Battle of Trafalgar. Exactly. And I mean, there are two lessons from it. One yeah. is, you know, you can't just say generically lime. It doesn't right. matter how the fruit is, how it's cared for. Right. You know, once he juiced it and put it at room temperature, it was all right. gone. Right. So besides the fact that this guy did a clinical trial that that was that you know killed a bunch of nuns, he he also said, hey, this is a business opportunity. 
Right. I, I've just shown you know, maybe he felt that he didn't get you know compensated properly for saving the British the, uh, fleet from Napoleon, and says I'm going to make a business out of this. And so he he decides to start taking lime juice extract mm -hmm. and tries to sell it as a, as a cure for cur well, what happened? Why didn't he become rich? Because it didn't work. Once you squeeze it out of the lime, right. it degrades the vitamin C. Literally, it's called oxidizes. Right. And it happens when it's exposed to light and oxygen right. at room temperature almost instantaneously. I see. So what happened was is that when the, when the, the soldiers were eating the lime in their whole form, sure, you might chew on a little bit, you might cut it a little bit, mm -hmm. but there's whole pieces of lime that were not exposed, where the vitamin C wasn't exposed to the air or whatever else, that actually got into someone's system. Exactly. There's a reason Tropicana, when they sell you orange juice, it's in a cardboard container that gets right. no light in, and it's refrigerated. Right. Because that keeps the vitamin C intact. Right. But because people didn't realize that, because mm -hmm. they said, hey, okay, for whatever reason, they didn't get scurvy during Trafalgar, but hey, we have the lime extract, and that's not preventing scurvy. People kind of gave up on that whole hypothesis that it was about the vitamin C. And that's what you're saying. Right. As, as recent as the 1920s, people thought it was about it was an, some type of an infectious disease. Exactly. Scurvy. So the key is when you start to look at data, you have to look at all aspects of it. Wow. And somebody smart sort of looked and said, listen, how he did his first experiment was different than what he was selling and trying to validate. That's interesting. And if someone had looked at that for 200 years, we would have saved a lot of lives. Right. Because remember, it was from 1946 till the 1930s when we discovered what vitamin C truly was. Wow. And so a lot of lives were lost then because nobody paid attention. Fascinating. And then there's these other other side effects of, of one, you don't know, a vitamin doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. That's something right. that's kind of programmed into us, uh, maybe by the nutraceutical industry. Yep. Uh, uh, but but and even if it is a good thing, it's not necessarily even a good thing to get it in a processed form. And this isn't some type of like you know tree hugging organic. This is there's some science here is that look if if something is an antioxidant and it gets exposed to oxygen or some other oxidizing agent, it's not going to be able to do any good anymore. It's chemistry, it's, and yeah. so that's where the the whole the actual fruit is is going to be more. Valuable. And remember, one orange has a couple of milligrams of vitamin C. One, two, three milligrams. One pill has 500 milligrams. Right. So whoever making those pills kind of forgot what was going on in nature. Right, right. Fascinating. This is very good.